occur. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, so they've been going on in, in, throughout the geological history of the Earth, essentially. And uh, the Earth, uh, in, in the model that I'm presenting, is really a global brain, uh, with uh, the Western and the Eastern hemispheres being parallel to our uh, human brains with its uh, uh, left and right uh, brain halves. So, um, and... Uh, so what that means is that the reason we have earthquake is re earthquakes is really that uh, the the world is uh, has needed to uh, move its continent in order to develop a global brain. And uh, I did make the the interesting parallel in that article with what happened uh, when uh, the seventh wave began. Uh, which was in 1755, uh, the, the parallel with the earthquake in that destroyed Lisbon uh, in that year, and uh, uh, so I, I, I uh, which was also a nine nine point zero nine point two earthquake, a tremendously de devastating earthquake, uh, um, and um, so I do think there might be some kind of an some kind of adjustments going on when new waves are activated and meaning that that there is some uh, something happens in the interior of the earth that serves this um, the new field that adapts to the new field that is going to be transmitted to the human being and uh, 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 so that's sort of what I suggested as an uh, origin to the uh, Japanese earthquake, as well as to the Lisbon earthquakes, uh, quake in, in 1755. It's interesting, though, also that uh, how the philosophies have changed around these two particular uh, earthquakes. Uh, the Lisbon earthquake, again, was, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a long time ago. We have forgotten it. But certainly in, in Europe at the time, it was a tremendously dramatic event. One of the old uh, uh, seafaring nations of, of Europe, uh, Portugal, uh, basically saw its entire capital be destroyed. And it, it, it took a long, long time for that nation to recover. And, uh, and the result was that a discussion started in, in Europe with Voltaire and different philosophers at the time who, who said that, uh, well, we can, there cannot be any God because any, no God would uh, allow for this kind of event to happen. And so it, was, it really fitted into the new in darkened philosophy or the new in darkened mind that started in, in 1755 and where people became uh, rapidly atheists and uh, uh, rejected all kinds of uh, spirituality. Today, it's, it's almost the other way around when we're entering the ninth wave. Uh, I shouldn't say that people are welcoming the, the uh, God back into the picture, but what is happening is that it has led to uh, the, the certainly the questioning of the industrial world and and uh, all the consequences that it's it's having, it's sort of if anything, it has uh, brought people to turn away from from uh, pure materialism, re making us realize the limits to that kind of endeavor and uh, starting to uh, embrace uh, other kinds of values. Um, so I. Uh, I, I think that it's quite possible that these particular huge earthquakes, they are linked to this uh, beginning of these waves. Um, and, uh, uh, but it doesn't mean that I predict any earthquake again, so to speak. I'm too uncertain about it to, to make that. And I'm also uncertain, well, it's it's possible, you know, it, but but I, I'm I, I wouldn't predict it. I, I'm not 
capable of doing that. No, I understand. Okay, fine, Carl. Thank you very much. Carl, it's Lenny here. I have a, a question to ask you after you mentioned what you did to um, Five Cook about entanglement and chaos. Um, you, well, you said that as the filters are removed and chaos increases, um, entanglement is a factor. Wouldn't entanglements like kind of stretch through the chaos to assist with the development of unity? Um, can you expand on on entanglement and how it interacts with the chaos? Well, in this case, I'm not. I should start by saying that I don't mean the entanglement in the sort of quantum theory uh, meaning of the word. I just mean. Oh, we, okay. Uh, we we are just entrenched, maybe the word. We're all connected in all kinds of ways with um, um, uh, with the old world. We're living in it, basically, and or ha- we we are. Um, so so. Um, yeah, so I should say that I don't mean it in in the in the quantum sense of it, um, and um, um, uh, I'm uh, what should I say? Uh, well, I I think the this kind of entanglement of ourselves to the old world of the or the previous filters um, that means that. Um, uh, that li- it, it becomes uh, in- inconvenient to use a mild word properly when um, the, uh, uh, when the new pulses are coming in, the new unity consciousness is coming in. Uh, and of course it also sort of uh, sets a break on how uh, uh, quickly we can move in this direction. And um, uh, um, it's you, you can look and and maybe that is good in a sense. Otherwise, uh, we the change might have been too might be too rapid for us to be able to handle. But it's a, a stepwise, and it's sort of you might say every time there is a day, every time there is a peak in this ninth wave, there is a you might say that the unity consciousness that takes. Uh, and makes itself a little bit more strong compared to the uh, filtered frames of consciousness that have been um, dominating previously. Uh, step by step, uh, it's it's uh, coming to dominate. Well, thank you. Um, I have a, another question about uh, the Mayan calendar and the and the predictions of the Hopi people. Um, do they correspond? What is your thinking about that? Well, the the Hopi prophecy is a non-calendrical prophecy, which is true for almost all um, uh, prophecies of the world. Um, the, the, um, now, there's there is a recent uh, there's a number of different uh, prophecies coming out of uh, you might say Christian and Muslim. Uh, um, or should I say, milieus, or, or uh, like in the past hundred years or so, there are people that are seeing visions, and they are basically coming from a, a, a Christian background. And uh, but these uh, these prophecies that these people are are formulating are not linked to any timing, so to speak. They just see certain things. There is a consistency of what they see in the end time. But it's not timed, and it, it, it's in this that the Mayan calendar, I think, is, is unique because it really has a timing that, in my view, is valid. But and the Hopi does not have a, 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 a timing. They talk, I would say, a little bit more loosely about the fifth world coming into existence, uh, but that's not linked to any time. Um, what I find interesting, though, when it comes to the Hopi prophecy, is the, um, that not only is it about the the blue star that will appear, but it's also about the, uh, the it, a part of that is saying that when the blue star appear, the kachina dancing in the square will take off uh, his mask, and. Uh, 
to me, that means basically what I've been talking about here. Or my, my suspicion is that this refers to what I've been talking about here. Namely, that the mask means the filter. The filters will be taken off. And that's so when the blue star comes, there will be no more filters. Oh, and that's also, that's nice. Yes, it is. And also the the you know the kachina is some kind of a dog. And um, uh, and what I'm also been saying is really that we have been like puppets, doll doll puppets of creation or the creator who has. Pulling the strings, been pulling the strings and, and in different ways through the activities of, of these different waves have given us certain filters and, and sort of just transformed us in, in all kinds of, of, of ways. And uh, uh, so the kachina will stop dancing, they say. Well, maybe that also refers to what I'm saying, that no longer will we be puppets of the divine plan. Um, and and uh, um, so these are, you know, uh, interpretations that I'm making of the Hopi prophecy, uh, and it's the this fulfill its fulfillment, and um, they're possible. Uh, I'm sure there are many other possible meanings to it, but this is what I'm suggesting. So that being losing the mask, uh, taking off the mask would be almost like becoming enlightened. Yeah, that's what I think they mean. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lua wants to ask a question to you now. Okay. Okay, uh, Carl, um, you, you were talking to Five Cook about um, the after events of, at, you know, after October 28th. And the question I have is somewhat similar, but a little bit related, but more in terms of the kind of transition that we can expect going into this new level of consciousness, this new age that we're heading into, do you expect a sudden and sharp transition on October 28th, or are you looking at a more gradual transition around that date and flowing into a new kind of consciousness level? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, I think uh, the... This fall, and I'm meaning um, loosely speaking from 1st of August till the end of October, uh, I think things will be very dramatic in the world. Very, very dramatic. Uh, by uh, dramatic, do you mean earth changes, uh, volcanic events, earthquakes, etc.? Is that what I, you're talking about? I mean pr primarily a collapse in the social economic system. But that, that will be complementing that with um, some kind of effects of an earth like uh, earth changes like uh, nature uh, that might be induced by the common, uh, coming comets and uh, I'm not saying that I understand this fully um, I think I have a good uh, I have a good idea about how, why there would be uh, uh, like a social economic collapse and uh, you know, we, we, we're really talking about...